Hi, Elaine here. Today I'll share three ways you can update colours across all the pages in your Affinity Publisher file, even if you have hundreds of pages. What if you could change colours across your entire file as fast as this? The good news is you can. The better news is you can still do it even if you didn't plan ahead. This video contains four sections. In part one, we'll look at global colours. Part two, we'll look at master pages. Part three, we'll find out what you can do if it's too late. And in part four, we'll get smart. Part one, global colours. What are global colours? Global colours are created in document palettes and if you want to change a colour across your design at a later time, all you need to do is edit the global colour in the swatches panel and all the objects update with the new colour both automatically and simultaneously. What does that look like? Well, here's a design for a planner. It's already hooked up to a data source. If you need to know more about data merge, I have a whole range of videos listed in the description to help you. This file only has a single page. Once it's merged with my data, the merged file will have 366 pages. 2024 is a leap year. But back to global colours. Global colours can only be created in document palettes. Document palettes are one of four types of colour palettes that you will find inside Affinity Publisher. Those four types, document palettes, application palettes, and if you're on a Mac, system palettes. You'll also find Pantone palettes available for use. A document palette is saved only inside the current file, which does have the benefit that it travels with the file. So sending your file to a collaborator means that they have access to the same colours as you do in the same location. That is not the case with application and system palettes. Now here's how you set this up. Before we can create the global colour, we need to create a document palette up to the Swatches Burger menu. And you can see in there that I have three options, Add Application Palette, Add Document Palette, and Add System Palette. This one's going to be a document palette, so click on there. You're prompted for a name. I tend to call my first document palette, Document. Seems logical to me. And once I've done that, it loads in the document palette, but it has no colours in it whatsoever. So what I'm going to do in there is add a global colour. There's a few ways to add a global colour. I'll go back to the burger menu and choose the top option, which is add global colour. That will give me this dialog box where I can both name it and specify the actual colour. So this is going to be for the background. I'll name it background and then I need to either type it in or go and select the colour from somewhere. I happen to know the hex code for this and it is FFAE71 which doesn't come through automatically until you exit that text box, at which point that is my background colour. Then all I need to do is add it to the palette and it appears up in the swatches. The second one I need to add, so I'm going to repeat that process, add global colour, is for the day header. And while these colours look similar, they are actually fractionally different. And there is a reason for that, which we will discover as we move through the demo. So that is FF9251, move out of the text box and click add. And I now have my two global colours. Now the day header is the text at the top. So select the object and then click the global colour. The background is this shape at the very bottom of the layer stack. And that is my background. Next thing I need to do is to merge the file. My file is already hooked up to data. I've made sure I'm looking at the right sheet for the data and all I need to do is generate it. It will take a few seconds. There are 366 pages and let's close that. And there is my file. I'm going to move back to the very top and let's change those global colours. So right click on the colour and you have an option to edit fill. In here, let's make it a lurid pink, maybe not too lurid. And not only has it changed on this page, but looking across in the pages panel, you can see all of the pages have changed. Next thing to do is to change the global colour on the day header. So back into the swatches panel, click on edit fill. Oh, and I think we'll make this one really pink. And again, it's not just changed on this page, it has changed on every page. That is the beauty of using a global colour.
But it's not the only option you have. As an alternative, instead of including the colour in an actual page design, you could create a master page. This has one additional benefit, because you could actually change more than just the colour if you use a master page. You could completely change the background of the pages, but we're limiting ourselves to just changing the colour in this part of the demo. So let's take a look at that file. We're back to our starting point file. And in here, we have a background on the single page that we have. I'll colour that so you can actually see it. But what I'm suggesting with this approach is not to have that shape on the content page. This is going to be merged anyway, so I'm going to put it on the master page. So I'll delete it from this page, go into master A, which is our default master, put a shape on there. And that is actually the background colour. It will do nicely. It's not a global colour at this stage. I do not have a document palette in here, but you could make it a global colour if you wanted. And then you would have two ways to change this. But having it on the master page means that when I run the data merge and I'm going to update my data source before I do that. But when I generate that file, which again will take a couple of seconds and you can see we have the, the orange background on all of the pages. Without a global colour, I can still change all of them by going to the master page, selecting the shape in the background and changing it to something absolutely hideous, which comes through to all of the pages. So that's a different way of doing it. Both of those methods are great if you were thinking ahead at the point of creation. But what if you weren't? Well, all isn't lost. Here's another version of that planner page. Now, this is the actual merged file. There's no global colours in it. There's no document palette at all. So let's just check that. No document palette. There's also nothing on the single master page we have, which is master A. The colour is coming from a single object, which is on each and every content page. With it selected, if I change the colour in here, it only changes a single page. You could be forgiven for thinking you're going to have a lot of work to do, but no. So I'll undo that, take it back to where it was. So this is the merge file. I've changed nothing. The trick is to use select from the menu and select same. And then you have a whole range of things that you could select. Now here I'm focusing on the fill color. All of the background pages have the same fill color from the data merge file and it's the wrong colour. So if I select by fill colour, you may think, well, nothing seems to have changed, but it has actually not only selected the background on page one, but as I scroll down, you can see there are very faint blue lines. And that's indicating it's not only selected that shape, it has selected that shape on each and every page in this file. At which point, because they're selected, you can change the colour. So let's change it to that lurid green again. And this time it applies to them all. You will notice it did not impact the day headers. But the reason for that was they were slightly different colours, if you remember. So if I select a day header and I repeat the process of select, select same and fill colour. Again, we get the blue lines, but it is indicating it's only made a narrow selection. It has selected 366 blocks of day headers, at which point I can change that in here. Let's have a deepish blue. And as we look through these pages now, you can see they are all changed. Select, select, same is a way to achieve exactly the same as global colours or master pages, but in files where you didn't do that from the start, which is clever enough. But, oh, bonus time. There are two ways of working even smarter. The first way does involve global colours and the second master pages. But remember what we're doing here. We're doing this in a file that didn't have a global colour specified at the beginning, nor did it have any content on the master page. Let's concentrate on the global colour aspect. This is a second copy of the file we've just worked on, but I've taken it back to the beginning. In essence, I'm doing the same as previously. I've selected the object. I'm going to select down to select same and then choose fill colour. The difference this time is instead of replacing the fill colour with another standard colour, I'm going to take the time to create a document palette, which again I will call document, and add a global colour. 
this time let's have, let's have a palish green. And this is going to be the background and I will add that. At this point it's not applying, but because I have all of the background selected, I can now apply a background colour to them. You can see in the pages panel, all the backgrounds are now green. And instead of having to make multiple selections, all I now need to do is edit fill on the global colour and change that colour to whatever I want. Of course, I would need to repeat the process with the day headers. So again, select the object, select from the menu, select same, select fill colour. They are now selected. Add a global colour over here. So we'll make this quite a dark green, I think, and we'll call this day header and add. And because they are all selected, a simple click on there and all of the day headers are updated as well. So that is one way to get smart. There is another way to get smart. And for that, I will carry on using this file. The second way to get smart is to use a master page. So in this file at the moment, we do have global colours and that, that's absolutely fine. But it doesn't matter if you have a global colour or not. I will use the select method to select this. So select, select, same, fill colour. That will work whether it's a global colour or a standard colour. They are selected. The next thing may worry you a little. Don't panic. I'm going to press delete. What that is going to do is to delete that background shape on all 366 pages. But then what I'm going to do is go to master A. I'm going to add a shape to it. Happens to be a very similar colour, the background colour over here, which is a global colour. And because the master is applied to all 366 pages, it updates them all. So even though this file started life with no global colours and nothing on the master page, that select, select, same enables you to smart enable a file that previously was not smart enabled. I like that, but it gets even better. The master page option gives you more flexibility. So what I'm going to do here is delete this shape. That will remove it from all 366 pages. But what I'm going to do is replace it with something else. So using a picture frame and putting that across the whole of the master, I have an image I want to use as the background. So I'm dragging and dropping it on. Link for this is in the description. It's a little bit big and it needs rotating. So let me take it down a bit so we can see it. The image itself needs to be rotated. So let's rotate that image round. I'm using the shift key to make sure it snaps in place. Then I'm double clicking it. And what I'm doing next is scaling it so it fills the page. I'm doing it manually because I want all of the image in there. And that's it. And look what has happened. This is beyond what you could do with a global colour. Using the master page, you can completely change the background and it doesn't have to be just a single colour. It could be an image. So let's have a recap. We saw three different ways to update colours in all the pages in an Affinity Publisher file. We had global colours, which was the first method. The second method was using a master page. The third method was using select, select, same and I selected the fill colour for that. They all achieve the same result. They just do it in different ways. But then we got smart with existing files, ensuring they can be updated in the easiest way possible in the future. If you want to know more about using colour in Affinity Publisher, then check out my Working with Colour in Affinity Publisher deep dive. Again, the link is in the description. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.